Hey, chapter 14. Max looked Mr. Weinstock. Even without parents, Max knew she shouldn't accept plane rides from total strangers, especially not to foreign destinations. She probably shouldn't even go out to dinner with them. She needed someone she trusted to tell her this was a smart and safe idea. To be chosen by the CMI is a great honor, Max, Mr. Weinstock told her. A rare opportunity. They can protect you from Dr. Zim and the Corps. Max played the mental game she sometimes played when she needed to make a major decision. What would Einstein do? In a flash, her hero's words came swirling back to her. Wisdom is not a product of schooling but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it. Okay, said Max, let's go. But first I need to pick up my suitcase. It's at the stables. Fine, said Carl. After dinner, we will retrieve, retrieve it. He gestured toward the door. We have an early reservation at Le Bourdin, said Isabel, giving her watch yet another glance. The finest restaurant in all New York beamed Mr. Weinstock. A marvelous choice for this celebration. I trust you enjoy seafood, Maxine? It's okay, I guess. But I was wondering, would it be possible to go out for Chinese instead? We can discuss this in the car, said Isabel. We have to hurry. Dr. Zim himself is coming down from Boston. Who's he again? Someone you do not want to meet, dear, said Mr. Weinstock. Max hustled out of the office with the three adults. Are you leaving? Mrs. Gruber was standing in the little angel's lobby, her hands firmly planted on her hips. She made a very formidable roadblock. Yes, said Mr. Weinstock, tipping his cap. Thank you very much for your hospitality and the use of your office, Mrs. Gruber. Frightfully kind. Have a good evening said the stern woman who had the bearing of a prison garden, gar a prison warden. Maxine, you're needed in the kitchen. Those carrots aren't going to peel themselves. Max was about to say yes, ma'am, when Carl and Isabel each took one of her hands. Maxine will not be staying for dinner, said Carl. She's coming home with us, Mrs. Gruber, said Isabel. Is that so? Yes, we are adopting her. You'll find all the necessary paperwork in your office, said Mr. Weinstock. His English accent made him sound very authoritative. You'll also find the signed and notarized OCFS-4156 and UCS-836 forms on your desk. I trust you'll find everything in order. Good day, Mr. Gruber. We're off to celebrate the creation of a new and happy family. Thank you for all you have done to make this cherished moment possible. Mrs. Gruber went to her office to search for the adoption docu documents, which, of course, she would never find. Run, Carl and Isabel whispered to Max. Indeed, added Mr. Weinstock. The four of them scurried out the door and tumbled into a black sedan with tinted windows that was parked right at the curb. Isabel got behind the wheel. Carl took the front passenger seat. Mr. Weinstock and Max sat in the back. I'll buck I'd buckle up if I were you, Mr. Weinstock suggested, so Max did. Right before Isabel rocketed the car away from the curb in a tire-squealing, rubber-burning blast-off, Max white-knuckled her overhead handhold as the vehicle zoomed from zero to way too fast in a nanosecond. Do you always drive like a maniac? She shouted, because it was the only way to be heard over the roaring engine. Only when necessary, said Isabel, tugging the steering wheel hard to the right to careen the car around a tight corner. Max heard a shrill phone chirrup. Dr. Zim just landed, said Carl, studying the face of his glowing phone. He'll be at Little Angel soon. I hope he enjoys stewed carrots, laughed Mr. Weinstock as Isabel put the speedy sedan through its gear-shifting paces. We, on the other hand, are going out for Chinese. Isn't that correct, Max? And for the first time all day, Max smiled.
Yes, sir. But I think we better get it to go. That's the end.